everybody, it is I, Margaret, and we are here to have a regular vloggy vlog today. And the reason why is because I haven't done any more progress on my craft room because I am waiting on things like the furniture pieces to be moved up here before I can continue that progress. So it is certainly functional and all, but we are going to talk about some of your suggestions and your ideas that have come up in the comment section that uh, I can, um, well, we'll get to that in a minute, but right now look what I got. I have really good Wi-Fi and I made sure that I had really good Wi-Fi because remember I'm a techno person before I was ever a crafty person. And one of the things I also made sure I did when I built this house was I put an ethernet connection directly, it, it's wired, hardwired into the router which is downstairs. So that means up here I can use uh, I think this is a Cat7, Cat6, I'm not sure, but it's uh, a very fast cable that makes my uploads go so much faster when I put those videos up. And, you know, also when I'm doing all this zooming with my friends and whatever, it means I get a good, clean connection. So that's awesome to actually be able to be hardwired, you know, for a good internet, internet connection. So, um... This is a 50 foot cable and I can go anywhere I want in this room up here and still be connected if I want to. I mean, of course there's always Wi-Fi, but you know the benefits of that, right? So I'm going to just connect this up here and um, make sure I got a good cable because you know, that's always a factor. When you get electronics in, make sure that you test them and don't throw away your original packaging because sometimes you can get a faulty electronic product and it's no, it's not bad about the company or maybe even the distributor. It's just sometimes there's something that is faulty every now and then. So be aware of that. Always test before you throw away your original packaging. I'm gonna go plug this in and, oh wait, I'm not ready for y'all. Gotta go get a cup of coffee and I'll be right back. You may remember that in last week's video, I was talking about how I extend the, the little spindle things to accommodate my serger thread like that, and I just taped a popsicle stick to it. So several of you had some really good ideas for doing that in different ways. Uh, remember that I'm trying not to change it to alter it permanently because craft rooms are constantly changing and I may want to use that for another purpose later on. So um, several of you had some good ideas. One was to just cut straws and put a straw on there, which it tend, you know just extends it like that. I had heard that. That was my number one choice, and I would love to have done that. But you know what? I had far more popsicle sticks, and I had zero straws. <laughs> so that's why that my mind just went to the popsicle sticks. And then, because I was concerned about sticky residue that would come from a stronger tape, some of you suggested using Goo Gone or something like that. Now, I am a huge fan of Goo Gone, and if you remember a little while back, I discovered that it takes permanent marker off of plastics. I think I had a... Um, a big water cooler thing that I was trying to donate and I had to get Thomas's name off and it came out I and mean, then it looks brand new. But Goo Gone is oh, it's wonderful stuff. However, it is oil based. In order to be a solvent to get rid of those sticky things, you have to have an oil based solvent. And that wouldn't be good on wood, number one, because it's very strong in the smelly department. It does not smell very fragrant. And so it probably that smell would have stuck around a long time in my craft room and I, I don't like that. And, and another thing that concerned me was the discoloration. When you put oil on wood, it generally darkens it. And so I was thinking, you know, I didn't want to do that either. But Goo Gone is an excellent product. And then other people suggested rubber bands, which did occur to me, except for I was thinking it might be difficult to get it tight enough maybe? I don't know, I didn't try it. But in my mind, I was thinking, okay, what do I do? Do I put it on the popsicle stick and then, you know, several times and then stretch it over and slide it down? That might be kind of hard to do. I don't know, I just didn't give it that much thought. But you're right, a rubber band would have been perfect in that instance. And then another idea which was ingenious was wire. I mean, that makes all the sense in the world. I have tons of floral wire or um, chenille stems, you know, otherwise known as pipe cleaners back in the day. Those would have been perfect options too. So, oh yeah, and, and a, the last one which I thought was brilliant was zip ties. I mean, I even have tons of zip ties and you can put them on, zip them nice and tight and then 
trim them and it would have been absolutely perfect. So I didn't even think of that. I may go back and take that tape off just to make sure I don't get any sticky residue and use one of these good ideas. But I'm sharing that with you because if you didn't think along those lines, maybe you could use them too. Now, if you watch my channel regularly, you know that my daughter is getting married and she was supposed to get married around the end of June. And uh, with the, the virus situation, uh, what we had planned is no longer a viable option. And we were planning the great big shindig. So it's been quite the disappointment, but we have made the decisions on how we're going to do it. And we are going to look forward to it. She does want to get married on the day she set, but, and that's, that's wonderful. So we'll have something small, but then we will be looking forward to a big celebration in place of the reception uh, down the road whenever we feel it's safe to do that. Bottom line is we have to put it all in perspective and she does have a good outlook about it and um, it's, it's going to be great. So we feel like a weight has been lifted over our shoulders and we're starting to make the plans and, and it's, uh, or the remake the plans because the other one was completely planned. Now, now we're getting really excited about what it will be. So that's a good thing that's going on right now. And speaking of emotional roller coasters, this morning I happily sit down at my computer and I sign on to my YouTube account. My dashboard is the first thing that I see. And it tells you kind of the quick information like how your last video was doing and um, YouTube news and information. And there's a little feature I never even noticed, but it's who recently subscribed to my channel. And I never paid attention to that. When I looked over there and the first name was somebody who had this great big giant channel. It was called um, Annika Victoria. And so out of curiosity, I clicked it to see who she was. Now she turns out to be a person who sews and she does a lot of refashioning. She does a lot of um, fitting the body, specifically without patterns. Maybe that you know you could do it yourself. So she's quite advanced and somebody I think I'd really enjoy watching. She's young too, delightful. I mean, she's entertaining, edits her videos beautifully. They keep going at a nice pace. I come to find out she too had a wedding plan during all of this stuff and had to alter that. But then I discovered one of the videos. It was called Babes with Mobility Aids featuring Martina. And I watched this video. And as it turns out, Annika and her friend Martina, they both have some very debilitating diseases. Now to look at them, you would never know it. And it's very similar to what I deal with with this chronic Lyme. I look perfectly healthy. And for the most part, I am compared to what they're dealing with. When you look perfectly healthy, but you do have your own challenges, there are some real difficulties in how you feel about yourself um, disappointments when you can't hang with your friends, so to speak. For example, the other night I had already come in and put my pajamas on around five o'clock and somebody called and asked they want, if we wanted to come have drinks on the porch. We do a lot of outside socializing these days and with, you know, safety issues. And I had to say no because I was just I had run out of gas and when I do that, I know that I need to take it easy or I'm going to hurt the next day. So these two girls explained what that feels like on a much greater scale because their situations are much bigger than my situation is. But it helps bring awareness. Like if you see someone in a wheelchair and they're out and about and they stand up and you're going, oh, they don't need a wheelchair. You know, they do. You don't know everybody's situation and they explain it to you from that side. But they also, the whole subject was talking about being fashionable and, and um, feeling good and confident and, um, I don't know, even some tips on avoiding depression. Like one of them talked about building your ladder. It's a hashtag. And this is where she takes simple things, simple accomplishments that she does every day. Like on her, in her case, some days just getting out of bed is a huge accomplishment. And so she considers that a rung on the ladder. And if you're building your ladder with these positive thoughts and, you know, praising yourself for the good things that you're doing, you're getting yourself out of a pit. And I thought that is a genius 
analogy of getting yourself out of the pit. So on those days when you're feeling really bad, whether you have disabilities or not, I know some of you deal with depression and I know that it's also a very huge thing going on right now with this social self-isolating type thing. Um, we may be tempted to rush out into the world and go back to our normal everyday activities where we interact with people all the time. But we still need to know we keep our distance until we know more about this virus and we have a better way of dealing with it. So in order to keep ourselves out of depression, we got to think of things to do that can keep us up and out of the pit. And that's one little mental exercise that you could do. I'm going to link these videos below because I think you'll really enjoy watching them. They are considerably younger than most of my demographic and just a joy to watch. So this is the area where I was considering putting the couch like this pushed up against the tables and um, using my wicker chest as like a coffee table, putting a chair over there. And several of you were making suggestions of uh, possibly moving things other places. And I agree with you. This probably wasn't my first place to put it, but it's very tough to try to fix furniture in this oddly shaped room. And let me show you why. I use the wide angle GoPro to give you a bird's eye view of this crazy shaped room, but you can't hear a word I'm saying. But the most important part is that you see what I'm dealing with. And this is the floor plan, which may help also. It's a very odd shape. So this is how I intend to set it up. It's a good change. All of these things can easily be moved, quite frankly. The dream box is on wheels and it's the heaviest thing. These we can put on those little mover things and slide it all around. But let's go over it. You know that the dream box is here against this wall with the ironing board here. Those cubbies with the iron in it are right here. Then I have the table with the serger and the embroidery machine. The cutting table and of course the treadmill is here now but it's going over here. This is the two towers with the little desk right by the stairs. And then I want to put that couch here for my sitting area. This is a wicker chest that has old pictures in it that I need to work on and I can put my feet on it and be like a coffee table, so to speak, and then a chair here. And this way I can actually see the TV that's up here against this wall, which would be great. Having a couch is a sitting area, I guess I should say, is non-negotiable. This is really important to me because this is where I need to go to have my quiet time. Also, Tucker and I don't always like the same shows on TV, so I can come watch my shows when he wants to watch sports or whatever. So it's kind of a, a healthy thing. <laughs> So one of the things I thought about is making this the seating area. I thought this would be a perfect place to do that. So that would mean we'd put the couch right here on this wall and it fits very well. Of course, it's hard to move uh, with fingers, I mean. And then the little coffee table thing, chest, and put the chair over here. Of course, we'd put that lamp over here somewhere. Can you forgive me for not centering these things just now? Because it's kind of hard to do. Okay, so that was like, oh, how perfect. And then I have the cutting table over here, and I can actually see the TV from this angle. That would be awesome. Okay, so now where's the dream box going to go? And this isn't exactly to scale, by the way, but it's just very, very close. So the dream box won't fit here, and I guess it can because we can roll in the sides if I need to get in here. And this, of course, it doesn't really block anything. And I'm the only person up here most of the time. So I guess it can go here. So let's, let's use this as an, as an idea. Where would the sewing machine tables go? I would like to have had them handy some kind of way. That table's too big there. This is not sewing machine tables. This is embroidery machine and serger. And when I, I like to sew right here, so I'd like the serger to be somewhere near here. And this table is not on wheels. Now, I suppose I could figure out how to make it on wheels, but I don't know. Let's just put it there for now. Okay, we, I like the cubbies in the tower right here. That's perfect. So that could kind of back up. Oh, look, that's kind of looking good. 
All right, the treadmill can still go back over here as we thought, but where do you put the ironing board? The ironing board needs to be somewhere near this stuff. It's too big to go here, isn't it? Well, actually, I like it this direction. There's not a plug. Well, there's a plug around the corner. It's not my favorite right there. But where do we put this table? You see what I'm talking about? I can't put it here because this is going to have to be moved because it blocks the walkway. Um, I don't know. Let's figure something out about that in a minute. Um, the cubbies, we could actually leave the cubbies there and put the chair up against that and that would kind of be cute. Like, it reminds me of a library. Because I don't get into these every single day and it's simple enough to move. Boop, get into what you need. Boop, bring it back. Um, but it's not ideal, but it's okay. And then we have this credenza. Now the credenza is tall. It's uh, way taller than these windows. These windows need at least 36 inches to swing out because the shutters swing out like this and I want to have full use of my shutters so I can't block it here I won't be able to open my shutters so I suppose it could go over here but we still don't have a place for the sewing machines okay let's call this option one tell me what you would do with this table if we used option one I mean I guess it could still extend here as it is right now and then I could scoot across that's kind of a far way to be scooting I don't like this let's come up with another idea okay wait what I just thought of something it's not ideal but this table could be used over here under the windows okay this may work now I think a lot of people would normally put their couch maybe here and there's the little coffee table right here. Not coffee table, what is that? The chest, the wicker chest. And then, you know, maybe put the chair over here. And that seems very logical. However, I can't open these shutters if I do that. Now somebody else had a really good idea saying why don't you put a sofa table behind there in which case that would move it forward but I would have to put one out about the size of this and it, I would lose a lot of space right here so um, can't put the couch there but I did think about putting it here in the center of this wall and putting the cutting table over here but the problem with this is that the cutting table has to be pushed way over here it's not on wheels and it can't move easily to get in and out of that attic door so that kind of bugs me the way that it doesn't sit centered on this entire wall right here so I think that would really bug the stew out of me so I don't like that option remember the cutting table has the TV on the top and the whole point of the couch is to be able to sit and watch the TV now this scenario could work because we could easily put the couch on those little sliders and we can shove it out of the way when we need to get in there and that would be simple all right wait I have to interrupt myself turns out that those options are off the table I thought the couch would fit against this wall it will not the couch is actually 88 inches and, and it just won't fit here so that knocked that option off the table and then I give a third option where that couch is in that spot so that's not going to work either but I do like the cutting table over in that little area so I brought Tucker up here and showed him my little blueprint that I had made and he kind of tends to agree with me that what I originally had planned makes the most sense but keep in mind we're really not going to know until we get everything up here set it up try it out and see if there's any other options because it's it's tricky and when you're specially relationship challenged like I am sometimes I gotta live in it feel it and uh, see the perspective of everything myself and not just try to imagine I'm not good at that so stay tuned for that Tucker's out there lighting his grill I don't know if you can see that he's on his way to trying something brand new today 
We've never done a grilled eye of round roast. And it's from a book called New South Grilling by Robert St. John, who is a Mississippi chef. He owns two restaurants in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and his cooking is awesome. So we have this book, and Tucker likes to cook out of it. He's, he's been busy and hasn't had an opportunity to do this much. So right now, since we've been moved here, it's been awesome because he's trying recipe after recipe, and they've all been delicious. He's using this uh, lighter thing. You're not supposed to use charcoal that already has lighter fluid in it. So you get that, what's it called, Tucker? Lump charcoal. Lump charcoal like that. But then it takes a little bit more to, to fire it up. But this is an awesome thing. So if you have a gift that you need to get a griller in your life, this is a wonderful thing. I'll put a link to it below for my Amazon store. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is what, I don't know if it's been a whole minute. And there's the best dog in the world. He doesn't run away. He just stays in our little yard. Here we go. I don't know if you can see this orange paint here, but the landscaper was here the other day, and this is where the outdoor kitchen is going to go. So Tucker has fixed a place where he'll be able to roll that, that uh, green egg in and out, so that'll be nice. And then, I don't know if you can see the orange, it's just beyond where the shadow is, but we're building this patio all the way out. So. Um, That'll be nice when it finally gets done and when we finally get some plants around here. We have a naked house. Shucking the corn, we're gonna have grilled corn from the grill. Once upon a time, I had a compost bin, so all that could have gone in the compost bin, but alas, we don't have that here. So, Chef, tell us what your process is here. I'm putting the butter on, and then when, once I get butter on all of them, I'll do salt and pepper and roll them up, and we're ready to go on the grill. So you never put them on the grill unwrapped? Nope. Some people uh, soak them uh -huh. in the shucks, and they kind of steam them on the grill, and it does it a little different type of technique. This more is a grill because you have some uh, charred marks on this normally. Even though it's wrapped in tin foil? It, yeah, it's, you, you, you get some. I keep seeing things squirting out of it. Fresh, a little water. Yeah. Well, tell us how you grill your corn in the comment section below. Okay, so you season the meat and you put it on, and how long do you cook it? I'm gonna cook it on, uh, for 15 minutes on direct high heat, and I'll turn it every three to four minutes. And then I'll set it up for indirect heat, and I'll cook it another 35, 40 minutes. Okay, what were you just doing to the top of that? This controlling the temperature. The, uh -oh. It has a flow. It has a vent at the bottom, vent at the top. And that's how an egg works, kind of like an oven. It's like a Dutch oven. Oh, uh, thank you, Chef. Dun da da. Now it must rest before we test it out. No, there it is. I told you we were filming the grilling process. What do you think about this new dish we're about to have, Thomas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, eye of the round done on the grill. I've seen eye of round in that Walmart thing. Here's another fun thing that we're doing. This is our arrow garden, and I know a lot of people have these, but they are so fun. You get these little seed pods and you put it down in the water solution and they start to grow. Now this year, instead of doing an assortment of herbs, I did all cherry tomatoes. And I can see right there that that one is already peeping its little head out. And I think there's one back there that's doing the same thing. I can't really tell because of the condensation in the other ones. But it's so fun to check on it every day and see them progressing. They're all popping up to greet the world. Oh, look at my little tomato family. I can take off their tiny greenhouses whenever they start to touch the sides. 
that's when you take the little greenhouse covers off. And they're doing so well. Oh, that one had two. Oh, I got that tomato plant smell. You know what I'm talking about? There they are. So, as usual, thanks for hanging out with me and hope to see you again. I want to do these every week, but it seems like I am getting sidetracked every time I turn around. Sidetracked with good things, though, so that's, that's good news. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Talk to you soon. Bye.